Chapter 6 talks about normal probability distribution. We dealt with that slightly before on the previous exam when we talked about a bell-shaped curve. We're going to start section 6.1 with the standard normal distribution. So, normal distribution, if you recall, depending whether you're given the sample information or the population information. So what normal distribution does, instead of me figuring out the average and add a standard deviation and subtract a standard deviation and add another standard deviation and subtract another standard deviation to figure out what's usual and not usual, standard uh, no, normal distribution uses the z-score. The z-score tells you a number from negative to positive and that number stands for how many standard deviations if it's positive are you above the mean and if it's negative you are below the mean so what it does it really sets the average to equal zero whatever the mean is say you're talking about a test it'll take that test score the average and make it a zero and it'll make each standard deviation one unit and that becomes very easy to play with when you have that condition, we use the z-table, or in our case, we're going to use the TI-84, which already has the z-table built in. So, we're going for figuring out, give me a score, how many standard deviations is that score above the mean or below the mean? Standard normal deals with continuous probability distribution. So unlike chapters 1 through 5, which were discrete, these are continuous. Definition. A density curve is the graph of a continuous probability distribution. Requirements. 2. The total area under the curve must equal 1. If you add up all the probabilities, those will add up to 1. And every point on the curve must have a vertical height that is greater than that is a zero or greater than zero. So, uniform probability distribution, that's when you have the probability being the same, kind of like rolling a die. What's the probability of getting a one or a two or a three or a four or a five or a six? All of those are one over six. Here, uniform, since we're talking about area, you take the length of the area and you say, well, that height right there is 1 over B minus A, and that would stand for all the probabilities. An example. The bus to Union Station leaves every 30 minutes and is uniformly distributed. When you see that word, uniformly distributed, that means it's the same everywhere. Find the probability that a randomly chosen person arrives at a random time will wait between 10 and 15 minutes. Well, this is what you're looking at. The bus arrives every 30 minutes. Since it's uniform, f of x is 1 over 30. And if you want to figure out what's the probability that a person arrives between 10 and 15 minutes, it's basically that area. The length is 5 and the height is 30. So that would be 1 over 30 times 5, which is 1 out of 6, or simply 0 0.167, or 16.7%. So here, it's length times width. That's easy if it's a rectangle. A normal distribution, and don't be alarmed, you're not responsible to know or use this in any way. A continuous random variable has a normal distribution. A normal distribution is a bell-shaped curve. And its density curve is symmetric and bell-shaped. Specifically, the curve is given. Again, don't worry about this. We will never use it. So, here it is. It says, the weights of all firefighters are normally distributed. Once you see the word normally distributed, approximately normal normal that means I could use the z-scores 
with a mean. The mean is 200 pounds and a standard deviation of 7 pounds. What is the probability that a randomly chosen firefighter weighs between, so let x be the weight, weighs between 185 and 195. Now something I want to point out maybe we didn't pay attention to, that is, if you have a discrete random variable, right? If I say the probability that x is less than 4, you would say that's probability that x is less than or equal to 3 because you only have those points. That's discrete. But if you have a continuous if you say the probability that x is less than 4 remember continuous means all of these values all of them the only one out is 4 so whether you say it's less than 4 or you say it's less than or equal to 4 if it's continuous you're saying the same thing and in chapter 6 and on we're using continuous so notice the fact that those are not included whether you include them or not it doesn't matter so in this case this is how we look at this we say look the average is 200 add a standard deviation that's 207 another standard deviation 214 221 subtract a standard deviation that's 193 subtract another standard deviation that's 186, 179. So basically, this is what you're doing. You're trying to find the area between 185 and 195. So you're trying to find this area. As you see, I cannot use length times width because this is not a rectangle anymore. So instead, I'm going to use those tables. Let me remind you really quick, a refresher. This was not the last exam. So what does a normal distribution mean? It'll take this average and make it a zero. And instead of this score being 207, it'll make that a 1, a 2, and a 3, and a negative 1, negative 2, and a negative 3. So any score you give me that any score that you give me x what I do I change it to z and that tells me where it fits and depending on where it fits guess what I have a table that could tell me what the probability for each one of those is do remember within one standard deviation roughly 68 percent of the measurements fall within two standard deviations 95% and within three standard deviations roughly 99.7% of the measurements fall. Going to the next page. Let's talk about z-score and how this is played. Well here important notes about this z-score i'm going to show you everything there is about it but we're going to use that for the next few weeks it's very important that you become very comfortable with it use it back and forth important notes the z-score is used on the horizontal axis horizontal axis meaning there you go the z-score is always used on this axis the area of the region under the curve is equal to the associated probability. You look at the bell-shaped curve. Whatever this area is, call that A, call that B. This area, that's what this is saying, is equal to the probability that X is between A and B. Again, whether you include those or not, this is continuous, it doesn't matter. Two ways to find the area. I'm going to show you both. But we're going to stick with one 
there's a table table a2 this is on page 732 to 733 in your book and it looks like this there it is that's a table from our book there's that one page and there's the second page you notice this area only works to the left but the fact that we're not going to use this and I'll show you I'll use it on one problem and show you how it goes or I could use my calculator and on my calculator TI-83 I could say second distribution and what I want I want a normal CDF it's the second one down that one normal CDF and it wants the lower the upper the average and the standard deviation now if it is a standard normal let me make sure you're clear on that standard normal means the average equals zero and the standard deviation is one normal distribution means it fits under a bell-shaped curve now Two ways to find the z-score we use the table look up the score the area lies to the left and I'll show you one of those use the calculator I'm gonna show you how to use the table on this problem but then we're gonna be using the calculator all throughout so here's a problem if they say find the probability given that the z-score standard normal means the average is zero and the standard deviation is one normal distribution means it fits under a z but you're gonna have to use the average and the standard deviation and if you pay attention to the formula it asks you what the average is you could change that so here if it says standard normal i am aware that it's a bell-shaped curve i know the middle is zero this is negative one this is negative two this is one this is two three and negative three when the problem is asking find the probability that z is less than well if this is zero isn't 1.35 somewhere in there 1.35 aren't you looking for this area well if i use the table on page 732 733 so all what i have to do is go to that table and look for a z-score of 1.35 1.35 so the z scores are right there negative 3 i want it to be positive all of these are negative here we go so this is saying the z score of 1.3 1.3 is right there if you see it 1.3 5 you see where the 5 is 1.35 it's that number right there 0 0.9115 do we see this number that is 1.35 1.36 is right there 1.37 is right there so it's 0 0.9115 this is 0 0.9115 there's a 91.15 percent chance of being in that area okay what if I want to use my calculator calculator is a lot more efficient if I use the TI 84 I'm looking at they say the lower now the lower end doesn't this go all the way down in case you don't know what that number is one negative one e 99 that means negative 10 negative 1 times 10 to the negative 99 so that's like 0 0.0000001 but it's negative so it's going all the way to the left I'm sorry take that back I apologize this is negative 1 times 10 to the 99 so that's negative 1 and 99 zeros do you see how small that number is so anytime you want to run all the way to the left you leave that number as is it's asking what is the upper this is the lower what's the upper is it 1.35 the upper 
if the average is zero, if it's standard normal, the average is zero and the standard deviation is one. If not, you input that. Paste and tell me what their area is. And guess what? If I run that value, would you agree Would you agree that that bad? Now remember, percentage, we only care about two decimals. Isn't that 0 0.911? And if I stop, don't you run to 5? Or 91.15%. So the way we're going to work, I am going to be using the calculator from this point and on. There's no point in using the table in the book. It's kind of a challenge to use. And you need to have it. We don't. How about here? What's the probability that Z, again, remember, this is standard normal. That's zero. That's negative one, negative two, negative three, one, two, and three. Where is 0 0.68? It's between zero and one, anywhere in there. And they're looking for this area. Well, the table doesn't allow me to find the score. If I'm going to use the table, I have to use the left, which means the whole area under this is one. So I have to modify, but if I'm using, and I am going to stick with the calculator, I don't have to do anything. I would say, well, let's see. Go to, uh, let me see if I could enlarge this just a bit, maybe. I don't know. Okay, that part, and that part just a bit. There, hopefully this is better, I hope. So, if I take, oops, if I take distribution, I'm sorry, not distribution, distribution and I want normal CDF normal PDF we're not going to use normal CDF it's asking what's the lower look at the lower the lower is isn't the lower 0 0.68 the lower is 0 0.68 what's the upper the upper is 1 and we're going to use that EE -E key. And it's right there. Do you see EE? -E? To the 99. And tell me what that area is. And there's my answer. Equals from the calculator. So remember where EE -E is. And that's something you're going to... Anytime you want to run all the way to the right, that's that number right there is 1 times 10 to the 99. Remember, 10 to the 6 is million, 10 to the 9 is billion, 10 to the uh, 12 is trillion. This is a massive number. Anytime you run to the top, if it's to the left, negative 1 times 10 to the 99. The calculator reads that as E, and you put the power. So this is 24.83% chance of that happening. And that's how it works. And we're not going to use the table. For, I just want to show you where the table is. But using a calculator, that's all we're going to use. How about this problem? What if I wanted to find the area? Again, this is a standard normal. That's 0, 1, 2, 3, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. So negative 2.43 is right there somewhere. That's negative 2.43. And 0 0.88, isn't that less than 1? Isn't that like right there? 0 0.88 I am looking for this area well no worries can I use my calculator S oh, wrong key I apologize second distribution I want again normal CDF PDF we're not gonna touch for a long time what's the lower end it's negative use this negative negative 2.43 enter and how about the upper 0 0.88 it's a standard normal so that's a 0 and that's 1 enter copy that answer you're done so there is the probability that the z-score is between those two values is really 80.3 percent chance of that happening